Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the third Favema talk. My name is Frank Balenzifa, and I'm the managing director here in Favema. I would like to welcome you also to our, in behalf of our sister companies, HEG in Lindlar and Wolf in Lich, also in Germany. Um, uh, HEG in Lindlar, they are famous to run horizontal filling and forming machines. And Wolf in Lich and also in China, they are expert in all form, fill and seal equipments. We will show you today an advanced machine for packing pet food, the FA438. My colleagues, Mr. Tischer and also Mr. James Large, he's joining us from the UK. They will explain you the machine in details. First of all, in a non-running mode and later in a running mode. I would like to ask you politely to mute your microphones. We will record the whole session and you will see you, you can join our video portal also to show that session to other colleagues. If you have any questions during that presentation, please write the questions in the chat and we will answer the questions, James and myself, afterwards. I will hand over now to Mr. James Large in the UK and he will show you the details of the equipment. Thanks. Thank you very much, Frank, for the introduction. Yes, good morning, everyone, and welcome, and thank you for joining us this morning. Um, so, the overview of the machine. So, the FA438 um, is uh, our flagship machine for um, small bag sizes. Mr. Balanzifa will try and point out some of the uh, the key items as I, as I go through the presentation. So, above this particular machine, we have a uh, multi-head wire. And uh, this multi-head wire delivers um, exact weighments of the product into each bag individually. At the far end of the machine there, Mr. Balanzifer is now going to point out the, uh, the magazine area. Here's the magazine area. This, this machine has a horizontal magazine and we'll give you some more detail about that later on. After the magazine, we have the bag transfer area which Mr. Balanzifer is pointing out now. And once we transfer the bags into the main part of the machine, you can see here the traveling hoppers. One of the unique things about the FA438 machine is the fact that it's a continuous motion machine. The more normal for this um, size range of bags is to have uh, an intermittent motion machine. And there's a number of reasons why we do that, which we can cover on later. After the bag filling section, we, um, we have the bag closing section. And Mr. Balanzi for now will move to, to show you the, the overview of the bag sealing section. And this is the bag sealing section here on the machine. So what we'd like to do now is uh, take you through some of these sections in a little bit more detail and show you exactly um, what each section does and the particular benefits of uh, each one of these in the Favema application. So at the far end of the machine, we have the magazine. Now this particular magazine, if we could just change the shot, please, to the, to the magazine. Thank you very much. As Mr. Barlanzi for us pointing here is the, uh, is the flat bag section. Now the reason we have this uh, flat bag section is something specifically developed for customer requirements who wanted to use a top slider type bag and this this bag set this bag magazine is capable to hand handle everything from plain paper bags um, with a heat sealable layer inside and without a heat sealable layer plastic bags with front zips plastic bags with top zips and plastic bags with top sliders and even even handle bags so this magazine also benefits from a good uh, capacity for empty bags to reduce operator load um, you can either with top slider type bags shingle the bags into the magazine so spreading them out or if you have um, bags without top slider you can you can put them in stacks and the machine automatically detects the difference between the two and takes precisely one bag from from each side so the magazine itself has two lines so we can fill up both and the machine alternatively takes from one line and uh, from the other line. So because of this high capacity, it means the operator doesn't have to revisit the, the machine quite so often. 
for changeover on the machine, everything's driven from the HMI. Um, this machine is fully servo operated in its main movements and in its changeover. So you just select the recipe from the HMI and the machine moves, and there's just two operator touch points to make adjustments. So this means we can change the machine over in typically less than, much less than five minutes. So at the end of the magazine, Mr. Barlanzief is now pointing out the bag transfer section. This is where we take the bags from flat and we bring them up into a vertical. And then from here, this system measures where the top of the bag is precisely. And this is very important where we're using bags with internal zips that we need to seal into position. And it also means the cosmetic appearance. We've got very good repeatability on where the seal is on the top of the bag. So this section here will show you running with bags running through the machine um, later on. And you can see precisely how that's handled. So after this transferring system, we move the bags forward. And there, here we go from an int intermittent style into the continuously moving hoppers for bag filling. So in this section here, Mr. Balanzifer is pointing out the hoppers. Now the, the multi-head wire that I mentioned before sits above this system here. And there's a single filling point as we come into these hoppers. One of the key advantages of using this continuous motion system is we have a very long and extended sealing time. Even at 60 bags per minute, we have three seconds to get the product into the bag. And the top of the bag is secured in grippers that sit on the bottom of the hopper. This, this holds the bag in position, and there's no adjustment for these grippers um, as part of the changeover. The grippers stay in exactly the same place for all bag widths and sizes. The bottom of the bag is supported by the bottom belt, and the sides of the bag are contained by the vertical side belts that Mr. Barlanzief is pointing now. So this enables us to produce a nice square pack with all material types. The belt underneath that supports the bags also has a vibrating section. So this enables us to settle the product very well into the bottom of the bag and in fact all the way up through the bag. So we get a very nice shaped bag as we then move into the final section of the machine, which is the um, deaeration and uh, and closing system. So if we could move to the next shot, please. And follow Mr. Balanzifa. Super. So at the very beginning of this section, we transfer out of the grippers and into the top belt. You can see that thin red belt running through the machine here. This again holds the top of the bag perfectly in position, ready for sealing. Uh, the first section that Mr. Balanzif is pointing to now is a vacuuming system where we don't pull a true vacuum, but we remove the excess bag from the uh, the excess air from the top of the bag. The bag itself has been mechanically um, pressed to remove excess bag air, and then we follow this up with a deaeration section where we use a, a, a pump to extract the remaining free air from the top of the bag. Once that's passed through, we go into the heat sealing section on the machine. Now, this is quite unique in the fact that we use a mix of continuous motion and intermittent motion. So the, the top of the, um, the, the, the section you can see there that Mr. Barlanzifer was pointing to follows the bags through. And in fact, in this particular machine, the FA438, we seal each bag twice. We have a rubber on steel in the first section and a steel on rubber in the second section. Now this is very important for when we're using paper bags, paper's an insulator, and we need to be able to put the heat in to get to the heat sealing layer. And this enables us to ensure that where we switch from four layers to two layers in the top of a gusseted bag, we're achieving a nice seal inside the bag. And it's a, it's a, it's a very nice cosmetic quality because it has up to, again, three seconds to make the seal. And we're not shocking heat into the, uh, into the sealing section of the machine. So the final part of the bag, is where it exits the machine and in this area we can also offer things like handle punches and uh, and and things like that and of course the date coding takes place on the outside of the machine so what we'd like to do now is to uh, is to run the machine for you and let you see the uh, the path of the bag as it as it runs through the machine 
So we'll just uh, get that started for you. So you can see here quite nicely the continuous motion of the machine. And in the first section of the magazine here, you can see the mechanism moving that brings the bags to the vertical. Yeah, and we just follow those bags through the machine. And you can see the continuous motion. We don't, once the bag is inside the main part of the machine after the magazine, we, uh, we run in a continuous fashion. And you can see how the side belt is uh, is capturing the bag and how this mix of continuous motion and reciprocating motion is now really following each bag through and gives us the whole sealing time that the bag is moving from the right to the left and you can see here the uh, the finished bags coming from the machine So um, yeah, we just ask uh, just ask for the machine to be stopped, and we'll uh, we'll turn on Mr. Barlin Zifa's microphone. So, so I'm back on, I guess. All right, super. Yeah, welcome back, Frank. Welcome back. <laughs> yeah, you did it very nice. So yep. it was a little bit loud at the machine; couldn't hear you. But okay. uh, yep. so coming coming to. Um, to the to the questions um, you had, and James, one one question is always what we have in the in the discussion with the customer. What kind of closing style of closing you can run on those machines? So that means closing styles from the bags. Okay, so closing style on the bags it's it's quite a wide range that um, can be run on the machine. So. Uh, quite traditional is to have a, a front press to close zipper. That's that's possible. That's that's not at all complicated for the machine. Yeah. Um, we we can in, in fact do top zippers. Um, we we offer even if the bag manufacturer um, delivers to the customer their um, their zips closed. We have a special mechanism where we're bringing the bags from the magazine to the vertical. We have a special mechanism for opening um, the zips there, and that works very successfully with um, single track zips and with um, um, Velcro applix type zips as yeah, well. Yeah, I, I could so I could imagine that this is always a hazard. You yep. know, in the customer places or, or when when they get the bags. Absolutely. Um, is that maybe is that maybe the reason for the new bag style magazine that we that we can run all these different closer closing systems? Absolutely. Which is good for the customers too. Yeah. So absolutely. So part of part of that um, initial development of the horizontal magazine was to be able to take the top slider bags in a more reliable way uh -huh. uh, than we had with the traditional magazine for this machine. Because of the extra thickness of that sliding element, it's very important to be able to um, make sure that that doesn't catch any other bags as it's being withdrawn from a magazine. So that's why we have that shingling effect on each, All right. each lane and that enables us to run those those style of bags okay so that means your customers are very flexible absolutely if, uh, the end consumer says okay i want to have these uh, closing uh, applications they can run it is it either paper or also pl or, or, uh, plastic or paper absolutely. because paper is something everybody's talking about Absolutely. So, so paper paper's um, a great option on this machine. In fact, from the very beginning, um, the machine has been capable to run paper. So you don't have to have a heat sealable lay layer on the paper bag. And in mm -hmm. fact, what we we can also offer is a, an external closing ma closing machine for um, for paper bags. Okay. Uh, and, and this uh, this will be, will be after the machine here, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, some of the questions we are also getting also from the customers in our in our conversations, what's going on with mono materials? Uh -huh. Because everybody wants to be, you know, uh, recyclable and this is a really good, good goal. What can you offer with this machine here? Yep, sure. Well, the good news is we already have customers that are running mono materials on the FA438 in the market. Okay, right? yeah. Yep, so that's that's a technology that um, Favema and um, has been looking at for quite some time. You know, this is this is a development that we saw happening right from the early days and we've we've tried to um, from the outset accommodate that. So there's some small modifications to make to the machine because typically they have. What, what, it, what, it, what is it? 
Yep, so it's to do with the ceiling area because typically okay, monomer theory. So that theorems... means this area here. Yeah, that we absolutely. saw before. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So the um, the typically they have a much um, tighter ceiling gradient than you would have with a traditional PET PE bag. So uh -huh. again, because the um, FA four three eight machine has that very long ceiling time compared to an intermittent machine, it means that we've got. We've, we can actually run with l much lower temperatures to start with, and we treat that top seal much more gently. So mono materials, you know, we were quite a long way forward already, and it's just really to put a put a coating or something like that on the ceiling bars themselves to to put the the cherry on top of the cake, so to speak. Okay, and then that means also for existing machines, you are offering uh, retrofits, or yep. do yep. do do they do they buy new machines for that? No, no, it's 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 retrofitable onto it's, the. It's also the possible. System. All right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, another question concerning this mono material because the mono material is a very, you know, flimsy film, not very stiff, and so how how you do this? Yeah. So compared to the previous magazine that we had with on with this machine, the flat bag magazine really has an advantage because it's it's more tolerant of um, more flexible material. So. You, you still need a certain stiffness, you know, we mm -hmm. have to bring the bag into the machine and place it into the grippers. Yeah. So, but it's a much lower stiffness than you would have expected, say, five years ago before anyone really started talking yeah. about mono materials. So that, that oh. flat bag magazine really helps for that. Okay, so that means um, if somebody has uh, questions about film quality and things to run, keep, um, keep us posted, you know, ask Absolutely. a question, maybe yeah. we can make tests on uh, certain applications you know, to yep. make that happen. Um, sure. last, last question in this section, maybe maybe tell us, you know, in the five bullet points of that machine again, so that everybody can go out of the session with the major points. Okay, so key, key five things I would say would be the flat bag magazine, which gives you the full spectrum of bags that you can run on the machine. So more or less any All bag right. you can think of, you could, with any type of top closure, you could run on the machine. Mm -hmm. That's, That's one. one. Yep, the speed of the machine, you know, two kilo bags at 60 a minute. That's um, that's a nice throughput. That's uh, that's you know, r really, really there in terms of throughput. Um, the top zip opening device is a very interesting one because mm -hmm. you know, even even if your bag supplier says, OK, we can supply you with the zips open. This really gives you that that guarantee that you will open that top of that bag and uh, be able to fill it properly. Um, I guess one of the unique things about this machine is the continuous motion and how gently it treats the product mm -hmm. in filling and how we can then achieve that nice cosmetic appearance by using that reciprocating motion on the uh, on on the top there for the heat sealing yeah maybe I, yeah you know this this part of the back here absolutely uh, which yeah. is which is nice and, and nice and even yeah so you don't you, you know with where you have especially with mono materials you can get some shrinkage and uh, we avoid that that shrinkage as as far as practicable by having that that continuous motion and that extended sealing time so that's um that's that's really that's other points things. yeah yeah those, cool those are very points. nice yeah very yeah. nice thank you for that mm. and um i guess you know we are in this range of 20 25 minutes now so i hope that you found this section you know, good for you, for your company. Um, you can always find this section, also other videos in our video portal. Please sign in. You know, we keep you posted also over the uh, social media channels, what's going on, which new de develops we do in the pet food area. There is coming up something in the summertime. Um, I would like to thank you special for our customer who had allowed us, you know, to run that machine today and to that we can show that to you that is very nice and very kind and i would like to thank you all you know the staff here in favema you know they made this great machine here and all the the staff also to make that uh, video and the the, the favema talk possible um i would like to thank you if you have any questions you know the channels how to to get us we are here for you and um we hope we will see you soon Thank you very much. Thank you.